Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. So this is one of the wells on our property. Uh, fortunately, we have two because this one is giving me problems right now. Uh, the pressure switch is not cutting off and I'm kind of lucky to have discovered that. So I turned the power off, opened up the pressure switch. The way this works, uh, I don't know exactly the mechanism, but when there's enough pressure in the pipe, it causes this to come up and it disconnects all those electrical contacts. And then when there's not enough pressure, it goes back down and those connect. And that just sends power down to the well pump. So this black wire and this white wire are 240 volts from my panel. And these yellow wires, you can see, go down into the actual well. Uh, so that goes down to the well pump. So connecting that, that, and that with that, that's what these contacts are doing. It's just making and breaking that connection based on pressure in the pipe. Uh, in order to adjust the pressure that it turns on and off, you, you only have one adjustment, and that's this nut right here. Basically, if you turn it clockwise, it makes the spring tighter and it increases the pressure, but there's like a differential built into the switch. So say the way it is right now, it turned on at 20 and off at 40. If I tightened that down, it might turn on at 30 and off at 50. Uh, if I tightened it more, it might do 40, 60. But there's like a 20 PSI differential that's built in. You just get to adjust what the maximum is. I had the circuit breaker off for quite a while and I turned it back on and decided to open this up and, and just see what it was doing. Now, it this line goes to our house and I'm in the process of doing some irrigation, so it was constantly pulling water off, thankfully. And this thing was sitting here at like a constant 65 PSI, which is really higher than it should be. It should be like 30 to 50. So when I pull up on this rail, that simulates the there being pressure in the pipe. And I assume since this thing wasn't used for a while, that there must be, whatever mechanism is in there must be stuck. So I'm going to take this out, bring it into the shop, and have a look at it. So here we are back at the bench. So... You know, obviously there's uh, what looks like a big diaphragm behind here, and that would make sense. That's translating the pressure, but there's water pressure going into this. And if that pushes on something, it can generate enough force to do that, which is actually quite a bit of force. But I cannot, just looking at this, see the mechanism. I want to take that spring off. So down inside here, is a spring that is attached to something that's directly in line with the center. And when I push it up, the whole thing goes up. The back of that spring goes up, not just the front. And then when I push it down, the whole thing flips down. So this this spring is kind of tick-tocking. Tick-tocking? Um, cedar sawing. Seesawing. Up and down. That's an interesting mechanism there. So I'm pushing up on this thing, just like we were doing, just doing that. And now you can see the back side of that spring that I was just pointing at. And when I put a little bit of upward pressure, it goes up. And looking at it, there's, there's nothing in between. Uh, and I think here I'm seeing the back side of the diaphragm. So I think it just pushes on that just enough that it wants to go up. All right, enough suspense. Let's take the diaphragm off. What's behind door number one? Nothing, I can't open it. Wow, that was really stuck. Okay. So this was there. Ugh. Ooh. Maybe that's the problem. The diaphragm still feels flexible, but it's all full of schmoo. Well, I'm betting it's totally plugged so that the pressure switch never saw any pressure. Let me go clean that up. This is worth seeing. So I'm taking a screwdriver and just scraping away at this. And the central orifice is just totally plugged. So, of course, it was not turning the well pump off because the switch was never seeing any pressure. I have a feeling that cleaning this out is going to fix it. 
Now most people would just buy a new pressure switch. And I could do that, they're not expensive. But I like fixing things and I like learning how things work, so they kind of go together. And I'm here, might as well fix it. You never know, one day the zombie apocalypse might come. And I'm gonna be able to fix the pressure switch. And what are you gonna be doing? Eating brains. That is totally clogged. See if I can blow that out. This might be interesting. Nada. Hmm. All right, I got my nut rounder here. And, man. Gee, I wonder why it's not working. Well, at least I can get the pick through. I can't believe how hard and stuck on it is. Wow. Look at that. That thing was supposed to be wide open. This stuff was so hard in there, I thought it was a drilled hole. Crazy. Now, what about this? Yep, same thing. It's supposed to be wide open, not a little tiny orifice. You know, I'm really lucky that, uh, that I discovered this because had I not been irrigating when I turned this on, which of course is why I turned it on, I was trying to help the other well. If I had just turned it on and walked away, this thing would have pumped up to however much pressure that pump can generate and just sat there and run until something blew. And it could have been something inside the well that blew, like, you know, the line right beside the pump. And then the thing would just sit there and happily pump until the pump burned out. And having two wells, it's very likely I would not have even noticed. That would have sucked. All right, I'm gonna go clean this up on the wire wheel. So, pitted metal, but um, it's got plenty of thickness, so that's not a problem. Diaphragm is nice and flexible. So this is like that. Here you can really see the mechanism. The diaphragm pushes on this piece of metal, which reaches up through on both sides and pushes on the other piece of metal that the spring is pushing on. So it is actuating the switch exactly like I was when I was doing it with my fingers. Wow, it takes quite a lot of force to do it. Then again, we are talking about like 50 pounds per square inch, and that's more than a square inch, so it's probably like 70 pounds you have to put on there to, to actuate that thing. Now, I've got this backed off. It's probably not 70 right now, but it may be around 50. It, it's hard. That is interesting. Okay, so why the fancy mechanism? Well... The idea is that when the pressure gets too low, the pump needs to turn on and then it needs to continue running for about 20 PSI and then turn off. So if I push, and I'm gonna push just hard enough to trip it, there. Now I start relaxing and I'm letting off pressure, letting off pressure, letting off pressure, but it's not going back yet. So I'm still letting off, then it goes and it starts again. Otherwise, it would just be like the pump would be on off, on off, on off, which would of course be bad for the pump. This gives it that, that range of pressures that it operates through, all in these springs and this funky mechanism up under here. The reason mine was not working is because there was no way for the water pressure to get to this diaphragm and put any force on this. So as far as the pump knew, the pressure never went up. This never saw any pressure and uh, it wouldn't work. It's dark now, but tomorrow I'm going to put this back on the pump, and I bet you it's going to work. For now, let's put it back together. So I might be wrong, but I think they call that a trip and hold mechanism. And I'm sure it's used in a lot of different control mechanisms and other applications, but uh, not something I've ever really taken the time to 
to get to understand before. Very cool. Teflon tape on our connections. So this, uh, that's the water right there actually. It comes up out of the well, down past this pressure gauge, and then it goes to various places. Probably tight enough. I don't want to crank it too tight because it's metal in the plastic. You can crack that. This is the incoming power. That's the ground. Okay, now this is power down to the well pump. So this is all 240 volt. In most cases, there's no way to mess this up because the, the two legs are just 120 volts, 180 degrees out of phase, so they're essentially identical. Uh, in other words, there's no polarity. So you, know, you could hook it up this way or this way, it doesn't matter where you put these wires. You just want one leg of the 240 hooked to one leg of the well pump, and which is which does not matter. So I turned the power back on and it worked fine. Uh, I had a bunch of footage and was explaining what was going on, but the wind noise was uh, so bad, I didn't know what I was saying. So I'm just doing this voiceover. Uh, yeah, I hooked it up. You can kind of see there the pressure gauge is going up and down. That's it cycling between the low and the high and everything worked fine. So I expect that pressure switch to continue working for many years. So what's to keep it from clogging again in the future? Well, nothing. We have black sand in the well, that's probably the source of it, and I'm just going to have to check them periodically and clean them out. Now, that one had probably not been checked in a couple decades, so it won't be that frequent. If this is your first time at Farmcraft, check out my other videos. I have way better videos than this one. See you on the next one.